The objective is to synthesize sodium hydrogen carbonate, common name baking soda, determine the percent yield for the conversion from sodium hydrogen carbonate to sodium carbonate, and determine the molar mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate via titration. This is a two lab period experiment. The first period will be used to synthesize sodium hydrogen carbonate, and the second period will be used for the analysis. Safety. Safety glasses, goggles, lab coat, gloves, and closed-toed shoes are needed. The hood is used for the synthesis. Preparation of a saturated sodium chloride solution in concentrated ammonia. Label a 250 milliliter beaker with your name. Weigh it and then add on 15 grams to the bean. Pour in sodium chloride until the arm of the balance rises. Take your beaker and a stirring rod to the fume hood. In the hood, add 50 milliliters of concentrated ammonia. Stir the solution in the hood for five minutes to make a saturated sodium chloride solution in concentrated ammonia. Leave in hood. Get a 150 milliliter beaker. After a few minutes, the sodium chloride will have settled to the bottom of the beaker. Decant the saturated solution into the 150 milliliter beaker. Leave the 250 milliliter beaker containing the sodium chloride and remaining ammonia in the back of the hood to be cleaned later. Synthesis of sodium hydrogen carbonate. Coming up later, in order to get a good yield, you will have to work quickly and filter when there is a layer of ice on the outside of the beaker. Set up your vacuum filtration system so that all you need to do is turn the vacuum on and filter. Obtain 35 to 40 grams of dry ice, solid carbon dioxide in small chunks in an evaporating dish or 250 milliliter beaker. Do not hold the container of dry ice by the bottom. Add about one third of the bigger chunks and stir vigorously with a glass stirring rod. As the dry ice sublimes, add more. The solution should get cloudy and thick as the sodium hydrogen carbonate is made and a layer of ice should form on the outside of the beaker. As the solution gets warm, the sodium hydrogen carbonate will dissolve, for it is very soluble in water. Do not let it warm up. Once you put the remainder of the dry ice in your beaker, take to your station to filter. Do not use large chunks of dry ice, as ice will form on it, which will dissolve the sodium hydrogen carbonate. Turn on the vacuum, pour the solution slowly in the middle of the paper, and then filter the remainder of the solution quickly before it has time to warm up. Prepare a rinse by adding a chunk of dry ice to about 5 milliliters of water in a 50 ml beaker. When it is ice cold, pour carefully over the baking soda. Now dry the product by keeping the vacuum on for 5 minutes minimum to draw air through the product. While your product is drying, clean up. Rinse your remainder of the salt ammonia in the hood and be sure you let the water run long enough to flush it down into the system so the smell of the ammonia does not come back up the pipe into the classroom. Leave the product on the paper as it is easier to remove when dry. To do parts B and C, you will need about one gram of product. Store your sodium hydrogen carbonate in a beaker or evaporating dish in a safe place in your locker. Part B, conversion of sodium hydrogen carbonate to sodium carbonate. 
Reaction occurs at low heat, slightly above 270 degrees Celsius. Two sodium hydrogen carbonates go to sodium carbonate plus carbon dioxide plus water. Retrieve the synthesized sodium hydrogen carbonate from your locker. Scrape the product from the filter paper to a beaker. You will need one sample for part B and two samples for part C. You will need two crucibles, crucible tongs, a clay triangle, iron ring, ring stand, and Bunsen burner to clean crucibles. Heat the crucibles one at a time at dull red for at least one minute and cool on your wire gauze. Heat the crucibles one at a time at dull red for at least one minute and cool in your evaporating dish or on your wire gauze. It will cool faster on the wire gauze. While the crucible is cooling, weigh the weighing paper on the centigram balance. Use the tear function. Weigh approximately 0.6 grams of the synthesized sodium hydrogen carbonate and 0.6 grams of the commercial baking soda. You will weigh the crucibles after they cool. Make sure you have a way to tell them apart, such as different containers to transport them. Weigh them empty, record the mass of the empty crucibles and the analytical balance used. Use an evaporating dish to carry the crucibles back and forth. Transfers are not allowed in the analytical balance room. Bring weighed crucibles back to the lab. Transfer the synthesized sodium hydrogen carbonate to one and the commercial baking soda to the other. Make note of which sample went to which crucible. Take the samples to the analytical balance room and weigh on the same balance to reduce systematic errors. Record the masses. Place one of the samples in the clay triangle and heat gently for about 10 minutes. A single blue cone flame is low enough heat. Monitor to see the flame stays in place. The vents cause the flame to move and stop the heating process, so you may want to use a larger flame size. After 10 minutes of heating, remove to evaporating dish or wire gauze to cool and replace with second sample. Once crucibles are cool enough, weigh each on the same analytical balance, record the masses. The samples may be disposed of down the drain. Rinse out crucibles well with distilled water. Your data should look like this. The most common error is not enough heating due to the vents blowing the flame when heating the crucible. Part C, analysis of sodium hydrogen carbonate. Reaction for analysis to determine the molar mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate. Sodium hydrogen carbonate plus hydrochloric acid goes to water plus carbon dioxide plus sodium chloride. Equivalence point occurs at around pH equal to five. So either methyl orange or bromocresol green will be used as an indicator for the titration. You will need four 250 milliliter or 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, burette clamp, burette, ring stand, and a white background. In a clean 250 milliliter beaker, get about 120 milliliters of the standard hydrochloric acid solution and record the molarity. Rinse the burette twice with five ml portions of the standard hydrochloric acid solution. 
Fill the burette to the zero mark with a standard hydrochloric acid solution. Check tip of the burette for air bubbles. Using an analytical balance weigh four labeled weighing papers, two for the commercial and two for the synthesized sodium hydrogen carbonate. Record masses and balance number. Two samples will be for the control, commercial, sodium hydrogen carbonate, and the remaining two will be for the synthesized. Transfers are not allowed in the analytical balance room. Return to the lab. Using the centigram balance and its chair function, weigh out on the labeled weighing papers the two 0.2 grams of the commercial sodium hydrogen carbonate and two 0.2 gram samples of the synthesized sodium hydrogen carbonate. Return to the same analytical balance to reduce systematic errors. Weigh the four samples of weighing paper plus sodium hydrogen carbonate. Record the masses. Transfer each sodium hydrogen carbonate to the appropriate labeled flask. To each flask, add approximately 50 milliliters of water. You may use the marks on the flask. To each flask, add three drops of indicator. Start titrations by recording the initial burette reading of the hydrochloric acid standard. If you use methyl orange, the solution will go from yellow to peach pink. Pick a shade of pink and make all your endpoints the same shade of pink. If you use bromocresol green, the solution goes from blue to green to yellow. If you go to yellow, you've gone too far. Titrate to the appropriate color endpoint. Record the final burette reading. Refill burette with standard hydrochloric acid and record the initial burette reading and start second sample. Repeat for the remaining two samples. Your data should look like this.